Prime Minister Narendra Modi, on Independence Day, announced Mission Sudarshan Chakra, a program to develop an advanced indigenous air defense system by 2035 to protect strategic, civilian, and critical sites from enemy attacks. Inspired by Lord Krishna's legendary weapon, the system will integrate surveillance, interception, and counter-strike capabilities, aiming to surpass even Israel's Iron Dome. Modi recalled Operation Sindor, launched after the Pahalgam attack, where Indian defense technology successfully countered Pakistani aerial threats, including suicide drones, proving India's growing self-reliance. While India currently operates Russian-made S-400 systems, Sudarshan Chakra is envisioned as a broader shield capable of both neutralizing threats and delivering decisive counterattacks. Modi stressed that the project will be fully developed within India, with active youth participation, to ensure long-term strategic autonomy. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited recently carried out two weeks of maritime trials off Visakhapatnam to identify and fix a defect that has grounded Indian Navy and Coast Guard Dhruv advanced light helicopters for over seven months following a fatal crash in Gujarat. The tests using helicopters from both services examined the integrated dynamic system, including transmission, gearbox, and rotor hub, under varied sea and weather conditions. Data collected is being analyzed at House Rotary Wing Research and Design Center and will be submitted to the Defect Investigation Committee by August end. The DIC, which includes experts from SEMILAC and DG Aeronautical Quality Assurance, is also supported by ISC Bengaluru, which is conducting fatigue tests on critical transmission components to ensure long-term reliability and restore operational readiness. The Indian Air Force is considering procuring Russia's R-37 Vimple air-to-air -air missile, capable of striking targets up to 200 kilometers away, to strengthen its long-range combat edge. The move follows Operation Sindor in May 2025, when India's S-400 air defense system downed Pakistani jets and an AWNC aircraft at over 300 kilometers, highlighting the need for precision strikes at extended ranges. The R-37 compatible with Su-30 MKI fighters, would allow the IF to engage enemy AWNC platforms and bombers before they deploy standoff weapons, crucial against China's J-20s and Pakistan's F-16s. Positioned between current BVR assets like Astra MK-1 and Meteor, the missile could bridge gaps until the induction of 114 MRFA jets, reinforcing India-Russia defense ties under Make in India. On August 14, 2025, Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif announced the creation of Pakistan's Army Rocket Force, a missile-focused command designed to enhance conventional strike power through systems like the Fatah 4 and Babur cruise missiles. The move, declared during Pakistan's 78th Independence Day, was viewed as a direct counter to India's Operation Sindor in May 2025, where weapons such as Brahmos and Praline caused major damage to Pakistani infrastructure. Experts highlighted that Pakistan aims to overwhelm India's air defenses with mass low-cost missile strikes. To counter this, India is being urged to develop affordable, long-range interceptor rockets, 40 to 50 kilometers, that can be mass-produced, drawing on programs like Panaka and QRSAM, to maintain air defense without straining defense budgets. India's Defense Research and Development Organization has begun work on an ambitious air-launched version of the Prale short-range tactical ballistic missile to boost aerial strike capabilities. The project, however, faces major technical challenges, particularly the missile's weight, which currently exceeds 5 tons, far beyond the Su-30 MKI's 2.5-ton payload capacity. DRDO may need to redesign or reduce the missile's weight for compatibility. Unlike BrahMos, Prelang is shorter, offering some adaptation advantages. If realized, the variant will employ a solid-fuel rocket motor, achieve hypersonic quasi-ballistic trajectories, and perform terminal maneuvers to evade enemy interceptors. 
The effort reflects India's push for indigenous advanced missile systems, though weight optimization and further trials will decide the project's success. The Indian Army has initiated a fresh procurement drive by issuing a request for information for upgraded Ponton Modular System assault bridges, highlighting its focus on faster and more reliable battlefield mobility. These bridges play a vital role in enabling mechanized and infantry formations to cross rivers, canals, and ditches, ensuring momentum during both offensive and defensive operations. In recent years, the Army inducted DRDO designed, LNT manufactured 46 meter mechanically launched modular bridges mounted on high mobility vehicles, which replaced older medium girder bridges. The new RFI, however, seeks longer spans, quicker deployment, enhanced launch systems, and tougher designs to handle challenging terrain. This step reflects India's broader defense modernization and indigenization efforts, aiming to strengthen high mobility warfare capabilities. Ruslan Pukov, director of the Center for Analysis of Strategies and Technologies and member of the Russian Defense Ministry's Public Council, recently suggested that Russia could purchase certain defense products from India once the war in Ukraine ends. He acknowledged Russia's strengths in heavy weapons, missiles and armored systems but noted gaps in defense electronics, specialized components, and advanced materials where India has made notable progress. Over the last decade, India has strengthened its indigenous base with advancements in radars, avionics, EW suites, and composite armor. With Moscow facing supply chain challenges due to Western sanctions, experts believe Pukov's remarks highlight India's growing role as a reliable defense manufacturing partner and a potential supplier of critical technologies in the post-war era. The Ministry of Defense is awaiting the final preliminary design review of the twin-engine deck base fighter, TED-BF, being developed by the Aeronautical Development Agency for the Indian Navy. Originally planned as a replacement for the Navy's MiG-29K fleet, the program has been hit by cost concerns, with development estimated at Rs 13,000 to 14,000 crore. The Navy had initially projected a requirement for 140 units, but this has since been cut to about 80. Due to budgetary pressures and scaled down carrier plans, raising questions about the project's financial viability. To ensure sustainability, the Ministry of Defense is exploring IF participation by proposing a lighter, land based variant of the TED BF, similar to the Naval Air Force split of the Rafale. A combined order of over 150 aircraft could make the program more cost effective. However, the IF remains hesitant, focusing instead on the fifth generation AMCA and ongoing Tejas, Rafale, and MMRCA 2.0 projects. Amid escalating tariff tensions between India and the United States, concerns have grown over the future of India's indigenous fighter jet programs, particularly the Tejas MK-1A and MK-2. Experts warn that possible U.S. sanctions or a policy shift toward Pakistan could threaten India's access to American technologies, including the GE F-404 and F-414 engines that currently power these jets. The Tejas Mk-2, a key 4.5-generation fighter project, is heavily dependent on the F-414 98kN thrust for its performance. India had earlier attempted to develop its own Kaveri engine through DRDO's gas turbine research establishment, but the project was shelved due to technical shortcomings. Calls are now being made to revive a Kaveri 2.0 engine with 90 to 95 kN thrust, which could serve as a replacement for both GE engines. Such an indigenous solution would reduce dependency, lower costs, protect programs from geopolitical risks, and even create new opportunities for defense exports.
Hindustan Aeronautics Limited announced that it has outsourced complete aero structure and airframe manufacturing of the Tejas MK1A to private industry, a move described as creating an invisible fourth production line. Under this model, private firms will build fully finished airframe sections, while HAL will focus on integration and systems assembly. This shift is expected to raise annual output to 24 to 30 aircraft, the highest so far, and ease the load on HAL's existing three lines. The strategy also supports the Indian Air Force's urgent need for faster Tejas deliveries. Looking ahead, HAL outlined a more advanced outsourcing plan for the Tejas MK2 program, where private players will produce not just airframes but also integrated sections with electronics, pipelines, and subsystems. By deepening private participation, HAL aims to streamline assembly and meet induction timelines, while strengthening India's aerospace ecosystem and boosting confidence in indigenous fighter production. That's all from YKS team for now, hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.